Hi everybody, welcome back to part 21 of the Revel 144 scale flower class Corvette. Uh, in this video, which is the last but one in the series, I want to aim to get all the rest of the Revel plastic parts fitted uh, and one or two other little bits of Pontos etch brass. And that will leave the last video to uh, fit the mast and do all the rig and just some last bits of tidying up uh, in part 22. So as you can see the model's looking fairly complete now and we're really down to the fine details on the model. So I'll bring the camera over and I'll show you how far we've got this week. On the run into finishing this model I've just been through the Pontos instructions just to see what I've got left to do uh, and you can see I've just crossed off everything where I've completed in earlier parts of the build so there's not too much to do now we've got the brake quarters, the uh, bow uh, fittings to do the davits to finish from last week there's elements of the rig here but I'm going to deal with that separately I'll probably be using rigging thread rather than the Pontos etch rigs we've got the engine room skylights to fit and the Lewis machine guns to do and the DF loop at the forward end of the bridge and I've got one or two uh, little bits to do on the bridge. I've got the windscreen to fit as well and glaze uh, but we're very nearly there with this one. I'm going to start with that DF loop which fits here on the front bulkhead of the bridge and it's entirely from Pontos parts so we'll cut those out This is the actual loop and I want to make sure that I get these orientated correctly. There is a top and a bottom. Because that's such a fragile small structure I'm going to paint it and fit it straight away. Get it onto the model, that's the safest place for it. As you can see. Now I'm going to be painting the DF loop and the windscreen in blue. The camouflage blue so I'll cut the windscreen out as well then I can get them all painted at the same time. This is one of those situations where I've got a duplicate fret with these parts on 
which is just as well because I messed up the first DF loop that I did. I've got it assembled upside down and I've got two attempts at this windscreen as well so hopefully I'll get one of them Just a quick check fit to make sure that I've bent it to the correct shape. So let's get these parts painted and fitted. I'm going to try and glaze the windscreen now with some crystal clear. These are quite large openings in this windscreen. So it'll be quite a test for crystal clear. I think I mentioned last time when I was glazing the radar lantern uh, if you missed that but what I do here with applying crystal clear is I do alternate windows because the crystal clear can pull out if you do an adjacent one before uh, the first one's dry. Got a nice thin bead in there so it shouldn't be too long before they're dry. I just don't put it down at the moment because uh, I might just catch them and pull them out so I'm just going to have to wait patiently holding that until they're a bit firmer. So that first set is nearly dry now so it's safe to go in and do the last three. Just leave that windscreen to dry. To get the DF loop on now, this just slots onto the front of the bridge. There's a couple of very tiny slots in the Pontos bulkhead. I'll just attach it down at the bottom with a tiny spot of canopy glue it'll dry clear and if it's showing we can just mat this down with a bit of matte varnish tiny little spot that's all we need sorry I can't get the camera in to see that but it's just on the bottom of the mountain frame I'm also going to attach the windscreen with a drop of canopy glue as well. The problem now with it being glazed is there's trying to find somewhere to hold the part.
Okay, so I'm going to finish the bridge off now by fitting the splinter protection bags which were all the way around the bridge bulkheads here and these screens. So just a bit of extra splinter protection for the crew on the open bridge. So I'm ready to fit these bags, these splinter bags. Uh, but I've also got the navigation lights to fit which go on these brackets here on the bridge wings on these side frames. I've just painted those in with a bit of silver paint and then I'm going to add some clear red and some clear green to those for the navigation lamps. The positioning of the splinter bags did vary over time, they were obviously removable uh, so the crew did fit them and take them off over time. Most of the photographs don't show bags on the side. Uh, they're always present on the front on all the photographs that I've got. Uh, but not always on the sides. But I do have a photograph with the splinter bags on the side. And I'm going to fit them because it'll cover up a nasty gap between the Revel bridge deck here and this Pontos side frame. It doesn't all quite line up. Uh, so fitting the bags on the side will help to disguise that. And I do want these to be fairly random. They were only temporary uh, pieces of kit so they weren't always neatly arranged on the side of the bridge. So it doesn't matter at all if we get them a bit uneven. So with the bridge finished just about, I think, I can't think of anything else that needs doing on that. I'm moving back a little bit on the ship now to do the skylights, these engine room skylights here. And that will allow me to fit the two pounder pom-pom bandstand, which just goes here ahead of it. But it does overlap the engine room skylight a little bit, so uh, we'll be able to more or less finish this uh, after superstructure at that stage. Unfortunately, uh, Pontos have the window surrounds as separate parts. 
I'm wondering whether that's if you wanted to use some acetate to glaze the openings and then <clears throat> try to fit the surrounds over the acetate. I'm not sure about that but anyway I'm just going to glue them into place and use the crystal clear method. So the first thing I do with these is fold the dogs up. These are the latches really that were able to lock the lid down. So I'll just bend those up. And I'll bring the lid over as well. Um, let's get the stay in position. Then the window ring. Each one of these uh, engine room skylights is in five parts. So we've got the lid and the frame. And obviously the lid just folds over to the angle that you want it at. There's a stay at the front here which props the lid open. A couple of hinges separate and a separate ring for the window surround. And I've ten of those to make. I'm going to make them in slightly different angles. The photographs I've seen show these at all sorts of different angles. So we'll mix it up a little bit. The extra thin super glue there that I applied at the end is just to lock everything into place. I don't put an awful lot of super glue on the hinge when I'm first fitting it, just enough to tack it into place really and then the uh, extra thin or super thin super glue just wicks in and locks everything together. So that's three down, seven to go. So I'll uh, get those done then we'll come back and fit them to the model. I'm going to do a couple of these skylights in the closed position which saves us a little job of fitting the uh, stay at the front of the lid which are a bit of a pain so it's a tiny little shortcut unfortunately having them closed doesn't save us from the task of fitting the hinges Then I'll build the last three with the hatches sort of half open really. So I'll trim these stays down. Okay, so we've got our assortment of hatches there, or skylights, whichever you want to call them. So they should add a bit of variety to the model. We do have these last bits of uh, turned brass to fit as well. 
these go in the middle of the skylight these grills have to be uh, bent into a bit of a curve so that they will uh, go around the body of the vent Okay, time for more paint. Okay, back from the paint booth. And we'll fit our skylights now. Right back at the beginning of the build, I painted the interior of this superstructure in black, just so that we didn't get any see-through effect. So obviously there's no detail inside. Okay, we're back to the crystal clear now to uh, glaze these skylights. This is the pom uh, pom bandstand, which I built quite a few episodes ago now. And you can see why I've had to fit the engine room vents before fitting this. I wouldn't have got them in otherwise.
Okay, now I'm just going to work around the ship and fit the last of the revel parts, which are all these very small bits and pieces that I've painted up. And it's really just a case of working around the model and getting all these fitted.
Okay, so I think that's as much as I can do this week. I've run out of time. It's Thursday night already and there's plenty of editing to be done. So I'm not going to be able to fit any more, but we're so nearly there with this. All the Revel parts are fitted now. There's one or two bits of Pontos brass to fit, so there's an ammunition in Derrick here at the back for the depth charge chutes. We've got the ship's boats to fit, of course, from last time, and I want to do some uh, little bit of extra work on that. With the Carly rafts to fit, with some lashings for those as well. The two Lewis guns are yet to fit. I've got to build those yet, actually, uh, and I've got to a few bollards to fit round about the ship. The biggest job for next time will be the rig. I've got the mast which I built last week to finally ship onto the model uh, and get the rigging done but the rigging on these flower class uh, vessels isn't that extensive certainly nothing compared to the rig that I did on the hood so it's not too daunting I don't think for the rigging process. But as I said, that's all going to have to take place uh, next week in the 22nd and final episode of the series. Okay, so that's it. We're done for another week. And we've made some progress. All the Revel parts are fitted, as you know. And the last big job, really, for the next and final episode is to ship the mast and to do the rigging it's not too big a job on a corvette so i'm expecting to get the model finished uh, in the next couple of weeks but i won't be able to publish next friday as usual with the corvette i've got other jobs to do which will keep me out of the uh, shed for a few days next week so i won't have time to do the work and the video editing and get published as usual on friday so i'll delay a week uh, and get that published as i said in a couple of weeks time but I will be doing an update before then on the Tamiya Mosquito, the 132 scale kit. I've built the Tamiya port engine and the work on that will be appearing in part 5 of the Mosquito playlist. And as you can see I've also got the two Tamiya 148 scale Mustangs up to the same stage there just behind me uh, on the left. And I'm hoping to get some painting done on the airframe of the first P51 uh, in the next few days as well. So we're closing in on getting this Corvette finished. So I'll see you in a couple of weeks for the final episode. So in the meantime, everybody, look after yourselves, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.